Our topic today is to review the skills necessary for this unit. And our goal, I can perform operations with integers and simplify algebraic expressions. Now, those are two of the biggest things we're going to review today. Um, but we're going to review a bunch of little things along the way. So we're going to start with common denominators. When you find a common denominator, you're looking for the smallest number that both denominators will uh, go into. Another term for this is the lowest common multiple. So in this case, we're going to take a look at 3 and 6. And if you don't know where to start, start writing out the multiples of both of them. So if I look at the multiples of 3, there's 3, 6, 9, 12, uh, 15, etc., etc. And if I look at all the multiples of 6, well, 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4 is 24, 6 times 5 is 30. So I've got the first five multiples of 3 and 6. And if you take a look at it, the first one that's common to both of them is this. They both have a 6 in there. They also both have a 12. And if we kept going, they, they will both have uh, a lot of other ones as well. But we want the lowest one. So the lowest common multiple of 3 and 6 is 6. Now let's take a look at the lowest common multiple down here for 6 and 4. Uh, 4 times 1 is 4, then with 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, uh, 4 times 4 is 16, etc., etc. Uh, and now we'll do 6. 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, and we can actually stop there because we found that common multiple. So the lowest common multiple is 12. And so the little hint that I have over here just says, if you need to, list the multiples of each denominator until you find the one that is the same for both. That will be your common denominator. Okay, So that's finding a common denominator. Operations with integers. When you have a string of integers with double signs between them, you need to first replace the double signs with a single sign. And remember, like signs are replaced with a plus sign. Unlike signs are replaced with a minus sign. So let's take a look at this string of integers we have here. We've got a double sign here. We've got a double sign here. And here, and here, and we need to get rid of them. So we're just going to write this again, replacing those double signs with a single sign. So I'm going to start with 3. Now, this double sign here, those things aren't like. I get a plus and a minus. They're not like. So I'm going to replace it with 1 minus, because up here it says, unlike signs are replaced with a minus sign. Um, here, if we take a look at this one, those are like. So I'm going to put down the 2, and now I'm going to replace those two negatives with a plus, and then keep the 5 there. Next, I've got two pluses. So I replace that with 1 plus, because two pluses are like signs. They're both the same. Uh, so I need my 6. And now lastly, I take a look at these two signs. They're not the same. They're unlike signs. And unlike signs are different, so I replace them with a difference. You know, difference means minus. So there we have replaced all of the numbers. And now we just need to take a look at our integer values. So I'm going to do this step by step. 3 subtract 2 is 1. And then I still have plus 5 plus 6 and minus 3. 1 and 5 together make 6, and then I have plus 6 minus 3. 6 and 6 is 12, and then I have the minus 3, and 12 minus 3 is 9. So be very, very careful of your integers as you're going through, and remember that positives and negatives cancel each other out, so I could have thought of this as having 3 negatives and 12 positives, and these 3 negatives We'll take out three of the positives, and so we're left with nine positives. So that's another way that you could think about it. So here's the little tip that I had here. Think of this whole string as just being some positive numbers and some negative numbers that you need to put together. And remember that positives cancel negatives. Moving right along. Simplifying algebraic expressions. Part one, collecting like terms. Terms are considered like if they have the same variable and the same exponent. You can't add or subtract things that are not like. So we need to identify the like terms. So when you are 
collecting like terms, you first identify the like terms, then put them together like you would integers. So I'm going to start with 2. What else is there like 2? Well, we have this 6 because it has no variables attached to it. It's just a constant term. So now I put the 2 and the 6 together. And remember, this is a negative 6. So when I put 2 positives with 6 negatives, these two positives cancel out two of those negatives, and I'm left with negative four. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is this R. I've got three R's, and here's a negative 10 R. Well, if I put three positives with 10 negatives, these three positives cancel out three of those negatives, and I'm left with seven negatives. And, of course, the R goes along with it. And lastly, I've got a positive 8 and a positive 9. Well, positives like each other, they'll go together. If I have 8 positives and I have 9 positives, altogether I have 17 positives. So I put plus 17x. Now let's try it with some where we've got some double signs going on again. We have to get rid of the double signs like we would the uh, when we were just doing integers. So we'll start by writing out without the double signs. So this, those two negatives are like signs, so I replace like signs with a positive. If you like something, it's kind of positive. 2 plus, 6 plus 2R. Uh, there's no double sign here, so I'll just leave it as plus 5. And then I've got two negatives. They're like terms again, or like signs again, so I replace them with 1 plus. Then I've got the 4x, and now I have a pair of unlike signs, so when I write them down as one sign, I put minus 7r. And now I have to collect up the like terms. Uh, here's a constant, and here's a constant, and so I'll put those together. If I have 6 positives and 5 positives, when I put them together, all told, I have 11 positives. Uh, I have 2r, and I have negative 7r. Well, these two positives are going to kill two of these negatives, and so I'm left with only five negatives, and of course, they're negative r's. And lastly, there's this term all by itself. I've got an x there, so I'll just put plus 4x. And that's as simple as it gets. I can't put together things that aren't like, so r's and x's are never going to go together. Constant terms with terms that have a variable are never going to go together. I can't add or subtract things that aren't the same. You can't take apples away from oranges. You can't add apples to oranges. So let's see what it says here. Always get rid of double signs before putting things together. All right, next thing to review is the distributive law. So we're going to multiply the number in front of the brackets by everything inside the brackets and then collect like terms. And the instructions when I want you to use the distributive law will always be expand and simplify. So hopefully you remember this from before, that 2 goes through the brackets and we're multiplying. You can multiply things that aren't like, but you can't add them. So 2 times 3x is going to give me 6x, and 2 times 6 is plus 12. Then I'm going to put this negative 4 through this set of brackets, and I get negative 4x, and the negative 4 times 28, remember a negative times a positive is a negative, so I get negative 28 when I do negative 4 times positive 7. And now I have to put together anything that's like. So this 6x and this negative 4x, they're like because they both have x's. And if I put 6 positives with 4 negatives, I'm left with 2 positive x's. And 12 and 28, when I put 12 positives with 28 negatives, those 12 positives kill 12 of those negatives, and I'm left with uh, 16 negatives. So I've got 2x minus 16. Now, doing this next one, I put the negative 5 through the brackets. That gives me negative 20x plus 30 when I multiply that through. And now there's no number here, but we can understand it to be a 1. And when I multiply through by negative 1, the only thing that changes are the signs. So I have negative 2x plus 3. And now we're going to put together anything 
that's the same. So I've got my x's, negative 20 x's. If I throw in another two negative x's, I get negative 22 x. Plus 30 and plus 3 gives me plus 33. And x's and constants are not the same, so I cannot put them together any further. Next. Evaluating algebraic expressions. Okay. Anytime you use a formula, you are evaluating your algebraic skill, using your algebraic skills. So an example would be, what is the area of a rectangle that has a length of 2 and a width of 12? And back a long time ago, you learned that area equals length times width. And when I gave you the 2 and the 12, I gave you a value of the length and the width. So if the length is 2 and the width is 12, we sub those in and we find out that this has an area of 24 units squared, since we weren't given any units. So the area of that is 24 units squared. Well, we can do this with any expression that contains variables. You replace the variable with the number you are given and then simply do the math. So be careful of order of operations when you do that. So for all of these expressions, our x is substitute is going to be negative 2 and our y is going to be negative 4. So if I take a look at this one, I have to put in a negative 2 where the x is and it's understood that it's multiplying. When you have a 2 and an x side by side, that means I have 2 times x plus 3 times, well, y is 4 minus 7. Now be careful of order of operations. It says I have to do multiplication before I do addition and subtraction. So this is negative 4 plus 12 minus 7. Negative 4 plus 12 gives me positive 8 because I have four negatives. They're going to take out four of those positives, so I'm left with positive 8. And 8 minus 7 is 1. So I evaluated that expression and I got 1. Now carrying on, 2x, y minus 5x, well, instead of x, I'm going to put negative 2. Instead of y, I'm going to put 4. And instead of x, I'm going to put negative 2. So I replace all of those variables with the values I was given. And now I have 2 times negative 2 times 4 is negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. And negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. So negative 16 if I add 10 positives to it, brings me up to negative 6. And lastly, we'll take a look at this expression. I have 3, and I'm going to substitute negative 2 in for x. And I have 4, and I'm going to substitute 4 in for y. And on the bottom, I have a 5, and I'm going to substitute a negative 2 in for the x. So we get negative 6 on the top, plus 16, because that's what 4 times 4 is. On the bottom, I have a negative 10, and negative 6 plus 16 is positive 10 over negative 10. So all told, my answer is negative 1, and that concludes today's lesson.